So today I want to do a quick tour of the allotment plot and it's all planted up now. There's very little to do on it. Uh, so it's basically just weeding, watering and harvesting. So it's uh, easy life in summer. So I've made some fairly big changes in the polytunnel this year. As you can see, there's a lot more space than I've ever had before. And normally I've got loads of containers down the center here and everything is very jungle-like at this time of year. But I've decided, and this is kind of an ongoing strategy for me, is that summer and autumn are really rest periods for me. So I've got lots of other activities that I want to be on with, uh, in addition to gardening. And then I like to come back to gardening kind of in, you know, late autumn and winter and spring and put all my effort in then. And basically, you know, then just when it gets to summer, we're back into relaxation mode. So you'll notice that as I go around, I'll show you, try and point out things that I'm doing to simplify life on the allotment in summer. Anyway, let's start with beans. So these are runner beans and French runner bean crosses. Coming on quite nicely. Lots of little beans on here now. Had our first harvest of these. Uh, on Sunday a few days ago and there's plenty more coming. I do like just starting my beans off like this in the polytunnel. I think of these as my first early beans and you'll see my second early beans in a minute and then I've got some main crop back in the kitchen garden at home. So kind of the same story with the cucumbers. I've got my first early cucumbers at home these are my and my second earlies at home and then these are my main crop cucumbers and I'll have some late crop cucumbers as well. And so I've got a couple there and what else have we got? Tomatoes. So all the way along the back here are tomatoes and all the way down here are tomatoes as well. So quite a lot of tomatoes this year. A few more than we did last year and I kind of started these a lot later than I have in previous years and to be honest you know they're not very much further behind now than they were and so I've been quite happy with starting them later. There are a couple like these that were put in about normal time so these are some ones from a test sowing that I did um, and I decided just to plant them to see how they got on and they got on fine so I left them in um, but other than that I think I'm generally happy with the tomatoes I've had a lot of successions already out of this polytunnel so in these beds for example I've already had spinach turnips radishes and now I've got beetroot and leeks and lettuces and carrots and here we've got this bed was spring onions and lettuces and uh, calabrese and now it's uh, <laughs> what it's called um, anyway basil and golden beetroots and celery and we've been harvesting the celery now for quite a long time. I harvest it as a cut and come again crop. And as you can see, there's plenty there ready for harvest again. We harvested it two days ago. And there's only, I think, nine plants in there. And that is plenty uh, for us and the rest of the family. And then come sort of October time, we harvest what's left and chop that up and freeze that. So I think I've already mentioned here, I've got some carrots, I've got loads and loads of carrots. Uh, it's one of our most important crops. And then we've got our summer leeks. So these are coming on really nicely, really good growth on them. So I'm fairly confident that I should have these ready for harvest in July. And that's nice because, you know, we, we like leeks and uh, it's nice to have them. Maybe not all year round, 
as close to audio round as we can get them. So yeah, these are growing really well. And then we've got some beetroot here. And again, quite good sizes on these. Um, all ready for harvest. And kind of I would really be harvesting these, but for the fact that we've still got loads of beetroot in store. We eat beetroot pretty much every day, but we had a lot in store this year. So it's taken us quite a long time to get through it all. And then just some supposedly early tomatoes that really didn't turn out to be very early, but some good sized trusses on them. So I've decided just to leave them in and then just a few more cucumbers. Now, obviously these cucumbers are going to go into these corners soon. Those are going to go outside probably and they'll go on strings. So there's some more French beans, actually some pretty good ones. They grow so fast, I can't believe that I harvested these two days ago and already there's quite a good harvest on those. So I need to pick those before I go home. You really have to keep on top of the picking. So I do have courgettes in the polyton. Um, but they're okay outside now, so I've moved them outside. They're a bit sort of big sprawling plants and they're a bit scratchy, so they're better outside. I've got another one there. And you can see from the length of the stems, we've been harvesting courgettes for quite a long time now. Underneath that little bit of bubble wrap there, I've just popped some ginger in. Um, I won't talk anything more about it because it's just an experiment and I don't know whether it's going to succeed or not. I've got some cucumelons up there in hanging baskets. And I've got some parsley down here, and I've got some more summer leeks kind of hiding at the back there. And then I've got some celeriac down here. You might think, what a strange thing to have in a polyton. But I'm just gradually working my way through a whole range of different types of plants to see what works and what doesn't in the polyton. One thing that did work really well is where I've got that ginger now. I had my first early um, onions and I got those about three weeks earlier than the outdoor onions so that was worth it because we'd run out of onions so it's really nice when you've run out of something to get it as early as possible and we basically I think we had two weeks when we were just using really big spring onions rather than uh, proper mature um, you know two three inch sort of size onions and we were quite happy to use those spring onions but it is nice to uh, have proper onions again and then I've got some garlic and I don't think this worked very well so there is a bit of shade here of course underneath the trestle table um, but I was interested to see whether garlic responded more to warmth or light and at the moment jury's not completely out on this but I would say that uh, garlic seems to respond more to light than warmth um, in terms of putting on growth. So that's, yeah, that's a lesson learned. Still, I mean, quite happy with it. The size of the bulbs we've been harvesting from here have been perfectly acceptable. One thing we've learned though with potatoes is that they really like warmth. So we've had some great success with growing early potatoes in the warmth of the conservatory and getting good main crop sized potatoes in April and early May. So this is where I've been doing my spring and summer carrots this year on top of these IBC tanks. I was really quite frustrated at uh, the wasted space associated with these tanks but now I've got the carrots on them I'm quite happy and you can see that these are ready for harvest now they're just starting to die back a bit um, and We've, had, we've already harvested two containers off here and we've got plenty more on here. So we've got just got loads and loads of successions of, of carrots, basically a tub every week. But all of our main crop carrots are in the ground still, the stuff that we're going to be harvesting over winter and all of that. Um, but for summer carrots, this, in spring and summer carrots, this seems to work okay. I start them off in the polytunnel on a trestle table and once they're germinated and you know this sort of size I leave them outside 
um, from about April onwards. I've just got some more tomatoes that were in the polytunnel. I just haven't got space for them now in there, I'm trying to keep it simple. Plot is looking quite nice. Just quickly look at the compost. I've got an empty bin. I turn these two bins are full now. Um, I just turn these bins into that bin um, a couple of times and this compost will be ready in autumn and then this is the bin where I put compost that I buy in so I like to buy in mushroom compost although that's getting difficult to get a hold of now but uh, so it'd probably be horse manure eventually I like to use bought in compost for mulching the tops of beds because my homemade compost tends to be a bit weedy although I am working on that I'm trying to get a mix that doesn't have any weed seeds in it so then this bed was all onions and we harvested those well progressively over the last three weeks and we got a really nice crop I was really pleased with them the white ones are particularly good the ones from seed were best those are tough balls um, the second best were the shenshu yellow from sets and then the third best were the um, red uh, ones from sets I don't think I'm going to grow red ones from sets anymore they're just the yield isn't that great um, too many of them are them to seed anyway so this is now all replanted with winter squash crown prince and um, <laughs> I need to get more sleep uh, sweet corn and then we've got some more garlic and I've just got one more um, crown print squash to go in the middle there once I've harvested the garlic but that'll be a couple of weeks it's not quite ready yet so lots more squashes and sweet corn and then down here got a very nice harvest on the way of gooseberries not quite ready yet And here, this is our main crop, storage crop of beetroot. So this is the stuff we're going to be harvesting in October. And I've got one more patch to plant up there um, once these broad beans are finished. These are running so late this year. But uh, anyway, they are what they are. But fortunately I've got another batch of beetroot that are also three weeks later so hopefully in about three weeks they'll all be gone and the last of the beetroot will be in and then we've got carrots these are winter carrots I think this variety that's in here is Eskimo they keep really well in the ground and I can put a cold frame lid on these and I'll probably do that in about November time when there's no risk really of carrot fly at that time um, but the lid just keeps the ground from getting too sodden and it keeps them frost free and as a result of that I can harvest them whenever I want them etc etc and then down there I've got some potatoes that followed oh goodness knows what I had two, two, two harvests basically an autumn harvest and a winter harvest uh, lettuces and turnips and all that sort of thing and then I put the potatoes in there. The potatoes will come out. I think chard will go in there. So then these are the biggest beds that I've got. So they tend to have the big main crops in them. So in this case, we've got collets in here and down here interplanted, we've got leeks. The leeks do get a bit bashed up, but uh, I don't tend to worry about it. They're still plenty edible. And it's the only place really where I can get a lot of leeks in. Um, so leeks it is and down the centre we've got summer leeks down the outside we've got winter leeks and then we've got the main crop onions at this end sown from sets and at that end sown from seed I think the ones from seed are doing better so far but uh, there's still plenty of time so I'm really interested to see the difference in the results basically we've got the same things planted on the same day 
same varieties on the same day and then we've got some apple trees cherry trees and these are the ever-bearing strawberries so I took any flowers off these early on I'm just leaving some flowers now um, with a little bit of aphid problems on the whole allotment site actually um, and definitely on my plot I'm not really worrying about it very much the uh, hoverflies are sort of out now so they'll soon start munching through them but what I have had is quite a lot of problems with aphids on the tips of the apple trees and that seems to be a problem everywhere so I've got it at home I've got it here as well and it seems to be associated with a mildew downy sort of mildew on the tips so I'm guessing it's just a weather conditions thing in this area I've got some courgettes these are the main crop courgettes I think we've got five plants in total obviously these are a yellow variety I've got some New Zealand spinach and some more courgettes here but I think this will be the first yeah this is the first harvest of these so we should actually have quite a nice harvest of those um, all the courgettes plants um, today and again I harvested only two days ago so it's all going pretty well we've not grown as much New Zealand spinach as we have in the past but uh, it's still nice to have one bed and I'm pleased I've got it actually because we're having some problems with the um, Asian spinaches which aren't really meant to bolt or very slow to bolt in summer being quite susceptible to bolting actually this year so it's nice to have New Zealand spinach which definitely doesn't bolt and then we've got my last batch of winter carrots these are all germinated really nicely so I'm really pleased with those and I've just given those a thin out and I will be putting the nets on those fairly soon but at the moment I'm leaving them off just because of weeding so I need to do quite a lot of weeding in these beds just for the first few weeks and then we've got one of my absolute favourite crops golden purslane this is the direct seeded bed and it's done pretty well it's only been about two weeks behind the bed that's down here which is the one that I grew in modules and it is a lot less effort to grow um, direct seeded so I think I'll probably be doing that again in future years and I've got another trial bed of onions again these are all red barren this one's from seed this one's from sets again I think this looks a lot healthier than this one and there's the first set that's gone to seed and these are all heat treated sets these are the last of my second early potatoes we've harvested all the first early ones and quite a few of the second early ones we started harvesting potatoes in April um, and so these are the ones we're going to be eating all the way through June and into early July then these will all get replanted with our late crop new potatoes and hopefully you're starting to notice that I've got a lot of root veggies on the allotment and a lot of heat loving veggies on the allotment so that's kind of my strategy for this year um, just you know and a lot of alliums because that's the stuff that's really easy to look after so this is the heat loving category so we've got all of the peppers and these are all sweet peppers of various different descriptions and no interplanting this year just to try and keep on keep the watering to a minimum and they are looking a little bit floppy but uh, I think they will put on some good growth fairly soon. There's some beetroot interplanted with some main crop salad onions for an August harvest. Some really nice kales. And lots and lots of 
early peas. These are my first succession of peas. Uh, we've been harvesting these now for about three weeks. They're a little bit late, but the crop is really great. So I'm really not complaining. These are more two at this end. Sugar snaps at that end. Shallots and spring onions down here. Spring onions and asparagus. And the asparagus is now being left to grow on. Some more peppers. And a lot of peppers on these at the moment. We're going to start harvesting some of these green just to uh, encourage the plants to keep on flowering. And more peppers here. There's plenty coming. Um, and I have already mentioned these potatoes, but these were planted in March. So they're almost ready now. And these should be main crop size potatoes. So our objective is not just to have new potatoes all year round, but to also have good main crop size potatoes all year round. And we ran out of main crops in store um, a couple of months ago. So we're pretty pleased that we actually managed to harvest some in late April and May. And these are the ones we're going to be harvesting towards the end of June. I've got some Brussels sprouts here and collects down there. Also interplanted with leeks. And I've just got my butterfly netting on here now. I like the butterfly netting because I can see through it. I know exactly what's going on. I can see if there's any aphids in here or any other problems going on with the plants. When I have a finer mesh on, I can't see what's going on and what tends to be going on is something I really need to know about. Something like cabbage aphid or something like that. So this is my mini greenhouse and I've just popped a bit of old scaffold netting over there just to keep the heat down a little bit. In here we've got some of the uh, overwintered onions that we harvested. We've got loads at home as well um, but these are the ones we're just drying so these are mostly tough ball. There's a few Shenshu yellows um, but you can see a good size. I'm quite happy with them and these will keep us going now until August time when the main crops are ready and then this is also full of the chili peppers all in containers all looking quite nice there's quite a few coming ready now as well so this is my early kale bed and there is an issue when you sow kales really early but they do tend to also go to seed early as you can see that's happening here and it particularly seems to be a problem with the dazzling blue so I might bear that in mind next year and just focus on the Tuscan kales but even those are going to see both varieties this is black magic I think and this is uh, Carvalho Nero so wh whatever you do if you're sowing your kales in January expect them to go to seed in uh, June July time but Unlike when they go to seed in spring, they do keep on giving lots and lots of really good quality leaf growth at the same time. So it's not really a disaster. Just in your planning, just expect to want to replant the bed in August time, probably. And underneath here I've got beetroot. It's going all right, but a lot of mare's tail. No matter how much you pick it, it's always back again the week after. There's not much you can do about it. And then this is the last bed of peppers. As you can see, pretty good yield on these so far. And this is the second succession of my French beans. These are a dwarf French bean. So these should be ready 
basically when the ones in the polytunnel are just getting a little bit tired so that will probably happen in about three weeks time then these should be in full production and then by the time these are finishing sort of early august time probably then the main crop ones in the back garden should be in full production and then this is my second early strawberry bed getting loads of beautiful strawberries off here at the moment and the all of early strawberries that were in the polytunnel they've all been finished now i've composted them all and the hanging baskets are all empty ready for planting new season runners and normally i like to do second year runners in the hanging baskets but i haven't got any second year runners this year so i'm going to be using runners off this bed uh, this is a nice early variety so they should work well in the polytunnel uh, give me a harvest about a month earlier and this bed is interplanted with garlic as you can see again not quite ready for harvest yet and then these two beds are both parsnips fairly good germination but not quite a hundred percent and this is interplanted with onions never tried this before I, but I'm quite hopeful that uh, they're going to work well together but not 100% and then down here in these containers we've got the ochre and this gives you an idea of what my plot would be like if I didn't weed it so there's some of the little bits of summer goodies that I harvested today and if you want to know more about the way I garden, just take a look in the description and you'll find a link to my ebook. It covers lots of stuff. All the basic stuff is in the basic section. And then there's lots more detail sections going into things like year round growing, self sufficiency, and lots of individual growing guides, advanced growing techniques, polytunnel and greenhouse growing gardening month by month etc etc and harvesting actually which is a, a surprisingly popular topic and I mentioned a few times that we did our main harvest a couple of days ago and here's a just nice selection of photos from that harvest so you get a good idea of the sort of things that we're harvesting at this time of year nothing very special but still a nice mix of spring and summer veggies so I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.